Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to Garage 42 in Acton, Massachusetts, where I store my cars. And welcome to V8 Swap Day. I'm trading out the Lexus GX460 for my E39 M5. This is a 2001 model year. If you're new to the channel, man, I've had this car for 10 years. It's carbon black. It's the LCI, so the uh, life cycle impulse, the updated version. So it's got the nicer tail lights, the angel eye halos, some slight differences interior wise. So it's got the bigger nav screen, but I just have not been able to sell this car because it's perfect. I bought it with 62,000 miles. It now has 82,000 miles. So I haven't put a ton of miles on it, but I have kept it in tip top shape, at least mechanically. It's had a full paint correction, ceramic coat, and Ryan just went ahead and did a little blowout of the interior to make sure it looked extra nice. Now, it doesn't have any kind of uh, PPF on it, so there's plenty of little chips and stuff because, yeah, I do drive this on the highway. But I think for what it is, it looks pretty darn good some things, right? It has this little smashed up fog light, which is funny because it's been like that since the day I bought it. And Ryan actually just freaked out because he was working on the car, getting the interior sorted. And he went to push this back and the little button fell off and he goes, oh no. So I came in and he looked at me and he goes, Tom, I'm really sorry. I, I knocked the button off. And I said, ah, just kidding it's been like that since the day i bought it i just need to get a new button it's starting to rain right now so why don't we jump in start it up and drive it home because i think i'm going to take this on a little road trip up to maine to see my niece i'm glad he didn't spend too much time on the exterior because it's going to get wet immediately and that's just the way it goes so i've got my old school bmw key it used to have my pickle rick keychain on it but pickle rick he uh he got broken so now we just keep him as a memento in here these were all six speed manuals and i think first order of business is going to be getting a new battery for this thing because i have never replaced the battery on this car i've always had it on like a, a battery tender that's one thing that i like about garage 42 they keep everything kind of moving and flowing and maintained but there's got to be limitations to this thing i just can't imagine you can have this thing for oh this has to be a 12 year old battery get our fogs going i love the way this thing looks because the interior lights are red old school kind of fighter pilot stuff because orange and red light is a lot softer on the eyes at night so any cars that have like blue or white lights bright stuff not great for actually maintaining visibility of the road because you don't want to be blinded by your instruments don't want to get smashed the second we pull out of here Oh, and there she is, our buttery smooth S62 V8. The S62 is a 4.94 liter V8. It's a five liter. And uh, this engine's pretty robust. The S65 that they used in the E92s later on, well, they were a little more fragile. We all know rod bearing issues. It's nothing new at this point. We're fully aware of the maintenance needs of those cars these m5s though are pretty stout the only problem is they leak so i have had to chase some leaks in this car over time and that's why i've done valve cover gaskets and rear main seal and some other little things here and there but i also overhauled the cooling system just as a kind of preventative maintenance thing so everything up front for the most part pretty new around the engine Probably put some new wipers on this thing too. Of course, the second I pick the car up, it's gonna rain. All right, let's get some AC going in here. This actually has like the best air conditioning of like any car I've ever owned.
And one of the reasons that I like having this in my stable and I don't want to sell it is because it's a little bit of a palate cleanser. New cars and everything out in the world is, is just so numb and homogenized and sometimes you forget like what things are supposed to feel like. And the E39 M5 is renowned for being one of the best driver's cars out there. So to be able to get in this car and kind of remember what's a return to center, what is a car supposed to feel like when it's a luxury car, but also a sports sedan. Because remember, this is not some chiseled hard edge thing. It's still fairly soft, but it, it, it walks a really fine line between sports car and luxury car. It has a recirculating ball steering system, so it's not the most refined or tactile steering, but it still has feedback and feel. I'm not saying it's the best, but it helps you kind of remember what a good steering system is supposed to feel like, even if it's not the best steering system. Also, the way this clutch feels, it's so tactile, it's the right weight, but this car is really about this engine. move. And even in 2024, it feels potent. It feels fast. It's funny, I was driving Aston Martin DB7 Volante the other day. It's a V12 manual six-speed. That car was $153,000 MSRP base price in 2001. This car was somewhere around like 80 to 90 grand, I think. And this feels more luxurious than that Aston Martin. It doesn't quite have the exotic powertrain of that V12, but even then, I like the character of this V8 better. Oh, thank God for Rain-X. These wipers are not great. Seriously, of course I pick up the car and it immediately starts raining. Personally, I think the E39 M5 is the best looking M5 ever made. I think it's gorgeous, it's perfect. It has the quintessential subtlety and muscular features that an M5 deserves. It's not supposed to be shouty in your face, it's supposed to just let you know that there's something a little extra that if you know, you know. And it still gives off that appearance today. It has traction control and ABS, but it's a manual transmission with no auto blip rev matching or anything like that. So you do have to drive it yourself. And if you want it to drive smoothly like a luxury car, that's on you. The S62 doesn't require a ton of revs. It will rev out around 7,000 RPM, but all the good stuff happens a little lower. Cool Volvo livery. spray paint rattle cam, but we respect it. Ah, I love getting on the highway in this car. It never disappoints. It always feels special. It always feels kind of exciting to jump on the highway and just get into it a little bit because here's the other beautiful thing about this car. It's not shouty with an exhaust that's blaring out there. It's not snap, crackling, popping, or any of that junk. It is honest. It's a naturally aspirated V8 with independent throttle bodies, individual throttle bodies, sorry. And, and the noise is slightly less than what you feel. Do you know what I'm saying? If you get a straight pipe Miata, you floor it and it's loud, but you don't go anywhere. And so you always have this weird disconnect where you're like, man, you got all this noise, but I'm not moving, I'm not getting pushed into my seat. Whereas this car, you get this juicy, subtle noise that lets you know that there's a good, exciting 
V8 under the hood. But it's not blaring at everybody. It's not shouty. It's just doing what it needs to do. And it lets you know that like, hey man, I'm here for you. It's a good engine. It's got more than you need. And it's gonna hold up. Okay, this is the worst day I could have possibly picked to get the car. It's just torrential downpours. The highways are flooded. That side of the road is just flooded. You're asking a hydrolock an engine. Oh my God. Come on. I cannot win. Oh, drive your cars, drive your cars. All right, cool. It's Friday. I'm going to go pick up a car. It looks like there's a little bit of rain in the forecast. Nope. This. Jeez. I can't, I'm listening to the radio. I can barely hear it over the rain. This guy's got the right idea with his boat. At least if it floods, he can just sail away. There was a guy in a Jeep Wrangler, fully doors off, roof off. I mean, dude, that guy was, it might as well be a fire hose. Oh, we made it out. Now, the stakes are actually higher than you think when it rains in this car because these cars have really bad windshield wiper relays and this one has soldered itself shut before. I always get nervous when I actually need windshield as a bad rev match. I always get worried when I need my windshield wipers for an extended period of time in this car because I don't trust that they're gonna stay. Because what happens is when it welds itself shut, it basically like melts all the solder points and closes the connection. They just stop working. The windshield wipers just, they go down and then that's it. It's all over, it's done. And it, that's why the rain -X is so necessary in this car because you have to have some form of backup. If you don't, you're screwed. but when it's like Vietnam downpours, you just, you just get nervous. We made it through, we made it through little buddy. I was gonna get fuel, but I don't fuel up when they're putting fuel in the underground tanks because it stirs everything up. And yes, there's filtration systems. And yes, the car has a filtration system, but uh, any risk of putting sort of sediment and stuff in the car, not gonna take it. Usually I wait, you wanna let that settle out. Ugh, people just throw their cigarettes out the window. Dude, I, if I were a politician, throwing a cigarette butt out a window would be fined by a hundred grand per butt and you'd have to serve a minimum six month jail sentence. Minimum. Like, that is so disgusting. You're, we live in a world where like wildfires in Canada have smoked out the entire continental US and yet we're out here just smoking in our Dodge journeys, flicking the butts out the window, embers ablaze. Like, come on, dude. And no offense if you own a Dodge journey, but I am not surprised by the vehicle of choice of the person doing that. A couple days later and the M5 is now back sitting in my driveway. Unfortunately, it's already dirty, but the first thing I noticed when I brought this car home and parked it next to the Type R is just how similar they are in size. In fact, the Type R is larger, at least it looks, it's four inches wider than an M a five series. So think about this, a compact hot hatch is now bigger than what used to be a five series in 2001. That is just bananas. You think of the E39 as a mid-sized sports sedan and the Honda Civic as your small entry-level car. And yet, look at the size discrepancy. You know, this isn't necessarily a wide car in the, the the Type R is genuinely very wide. It has big overarching fenders 
And when you park it next to like a new M3 or M4, you start to think, wow, man, this thing is a lot bigger than you thought. But it is just very strange when you see these cars side by side and thinking a car from the early 2000s with a 275 section rear tire is now skinnier than a Honda Civic. So that's wild. But anyway, it's been good having this car home and driving it and using it a little bit. And what's funny is when I pulled it into the driveway, when I first got home, you can see a little more of the blue in the color now. Carbon black is really tricky. It looks very black in the shade and it looks very blue in direct sunlight. But when I pulled in, I turned the car off and a little message popped up on the dashboard that says, check oil level. It didn't say low, because that is another feature of the car. It will say low oil level. Just check oil level. I went and used the physical dipstick, BMW, please, 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 please. I know I complain about touch screens and things, but just give us a dipstick back. That would be really cool. I checked the dipstick and the oil level was just kissing the low end of normal, which is so cool that this car is smart enough to say, hey buddy, you're right there. You're right on the edge, right on the cusp. You should probably just add a little oil. I added a little oil and she's good to go. So some things that I wanna do with this car, I told you I wanna change the battery. It definitely could use new suspension, okay? and. Yes, we should refinish these wheels. This is all chipping away. They are straight, they're good. We've had them We've had them taken care of years and years ago because when I bought this car, these wheels, I swear to God, were square. <laughs> they were really rough and I went over to RimPro back when they were in Tewksbury. I don't know, that's a very hyper local thing to talk about, but they re-rounded them essentially. And now they're great, but I think for suspension, this is getting a little crashy over the bumps. Even though this car doesn't have a lot of miles on it, it's still 23 years old, so it's in need. You know, struts only last so long. So that's the question now is I was gonna go with like a Bilstein, Bilstein, Bilstein. I, I seriously always forget how it's spelled, but I was gonna go with a PSS 10 coilover that might be a little extreme. So now I'm thinking to go with a B8, just a static strut. But what I'm curious about is if that's gonna be too stiff. So I've gotta talk to my friends over at FCP Euro. Maybe uh, JR can help me make some decisions. He's a big E46 guy and he'll probably have the answer for me. My goodness. It's amazing just being outside how filthy cars can get but i do want this thing to just ride a little better and be the grand tour of my dreams that can still take an on-ramp now if you're noticing i'm doing my darndest to try to keep the sunlight off of this thing it should just go in the garage but i don't really have garage access here and this rear i like to put a towel over here because all that stuff that always gets faded go look at any e46 you'll always see that that always looks purple it's bluish purple because it all gets faded by the sun but that is my first take of this season of m5 stuff I need to not be lazy. I need to just go get some suspension components, even if it's not ultimately the final thing I use. I just need to get some new struts in that. I think it'll be great. Uh, and I love the stance of it, even though it's probably riding a little bit low right now. But it's just, I, I, it is mind blowing when you see the size discrepancy between a 5 Series and a Honda Civic. That's so bizarre. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Follow me for more adventures in my M5. And uh, hopefully we can keep her out of the rainstorms because that was not fun. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.